What's up, y'all? Alvis here with Alvis Tech Group. Coming at you with another build vlog. Got a little few things to go over here. Um, pretty much I'm going to be going over what I'm going to be doing. Well, the components for the most part. Then I'm probably going to be using some options that I may be going with, may not be going with. Um, I got some more stuff in um, from performance PCs. So I'm going to be going over the stuff that I got in, some new stuff. I got a bunch of old stuff over here, things that I may be able to use, may not be able to use. I don't know yet. This P7, this Core P7 from Thermaltake, it's pretty interesting. It's really, it's got a really unique design. There's a lot of planning and strategic component placement that has to take place in order to pull off a case like this. It is open air. There are no bay, no drive bays. Uh, so I may not be able to utilize some of these items, some of these bay devices from Aqua Computer. These, um, these are power adjust and fob work, uh, as well as the Aquero 6 XT, the controller, which is one of my favorite components, water cooling components. So I, I'm, I don't know. I'm going to be quite disappointed if I can't figure out some kind of way to get that, get that, uh, pull that off and get that installed into this Core P7. Uh, it may not be that big of a deal. Uh, we'll find out. Cross that bridge when we get there, I guess. Uh, so let's go over some stuff. Uh, some stuff that I'm probably going to be using. This is this is a 120 meter radiator. I'm not going to be using any. Of the, the radiators that I will be using are going to be pretty large. Uh, two 560 millimeter radiators. Uh, as well as a 480 millimeter radiator. Um, this is a 560 millimeter 560 millimeter radiator here. It is a cross flow radiator. This is one of the radiators that came out of the um, the Red Rum 3. This is a cross flow. I won't be using this one. The ones that I will be using will be uh, inlet and outlet on the same uh, radiator the radiator uh, end. Uh, it works better. It's a little bit more organized the way this cross flow radiator has a bit of a uh, abnormal uh, shape to it if you kind of see this it's kind of a uh, decreasing, declining, I guess you want to say, edge. Um, so I'm going to be using that. But uh, this this uh, this build, I will be using brass. I got some brass tubing in from Performance PCs. I'm going to go ahead and be using some brass. I've always wanted to use brass. Uh, chrome. Not a, much of a copper. Copper doesn't really... Uh, doesn't really appeal to me much. I've seen a lot of people do steampunk stuff with copper, um, but I'm going to be using these these Biz Power Silver Shining. Um, this is chrome plated. It's brass, but it's chrome plated. If you kind of look in there, you'll see. You may be able to see um, some uh, goldish, but it is chrome plated. It is brass. It's not like a whole chrome piece. But I'm going to be using some of these runs. Um, I don't know exactly how long they will be they won't be bended runs uh, they will be straight runs uh, i got a bitch power brass tubing cutter here that i'm going to be using to get that get that stuff all squared away or whatever but i'm not going to be doing any bending brass is quite the task so i've seen so it won't be too much for me to get some straight runs out of this. It's still gonna, it's still gonna look nice. I may pull off some some um, some PETG runs, although how does this work? Uh, I've never used one of these, but we'll find out. It shouldn't be that hard. It looks like we got a really sharp edge, sharp bl uh, disc blade in there. I'm assuming you stick it in here this way. This is a 16 millimeter auto diameter. We can kind of work it around like that. This is a 16 millimeter auto diameter diameter tube. I uh, run 16 millimeter PETG, 16 millimeter um, OD um, fittings. So the more the more the merrier, the wider the tube. It, it doesn't really make much of a difference. It's a preference of mine that I prefer to use. Um, but let's get on with it. I got some PETG here that, um, like I said, I'm, it's going to be kind of a mixed hybrid. I'm going to use some some PETG runs as well in this build. It'll look really nice. Um, this the, the cooling is going to be red. So that red um, in the uh, tubing runs and as well as the red uh, flowing through the reservoirs 
uh, if, I think it'll look pretty well. Um, I pulled some of these 250 millimeter reservoirs. These are quite dirty, actually. I need to clean them. I pulled some of these out of the red room. There were three 250 meter, 250 millimeter reservoirs. Uh, these are EK. I use mostly EK um, water cooling components. But I won't be using those. I will be using bigger reservoirs um, as well as a smaller reservoir because this case uh, the shape of it the height of it is it, it would it would look very pleasing to the eye if i used a small 250 millimeters of war uh, so i got some of these ek x3 400 millimeters they are pretty large i believe that these will suffice very much so um the reservoir size doesn't have any type of substantial impact on the uh, cool the uh, coolant temperature or anything like that as far as the water cooling dynamics it is just a reservoir for extra cooling to be stored uh, the more coolant in the loop actually may have some sort of uh, small <laughs> benefit but uh, that's neat to hear about that so yeah i'm going to be using EK's uh, 400 millimeter X3. These are pretty tall, beautiful radiators. I will be using the X3 tops off of these 250 millimeter um, reservoirs and just swap those out because I like this. I like to have all these inlet ports and outlet ports. It gives me more options as far as routing, tubing runs of that nature. So I'm going to get those swapped out. I also have a smaller 150 millimeter. This is also an uh, X3. 150 millimeter uh, EK reservoir. This one is for the center. It's going to be for the center of the uh, the core P7 because the mother the way the motherboard is situated, it's going to it's not going to have much height. So I will be running three pumps, and I would like to have a reservoir for each pump. I may, in fact, uh, mount this reservoir horizontal. I don't know yet. I don't know how that's going to work. I uh, may do something of this nature. Come have a have a 90 out this way going down, which with the pump will be situated below it. You guys will see that in the future uh, build vlogs, how that how that pans out. But I don't know for sure yet. It's not set in stone. It's an idea of mine that I came up with um, in the mock-ups. But, yeah, so that's that. Those are the reservoirs. Uh, again, I will be using, I'll put these over here. I will be using D5 pumps. Uh, three D5 pumps, aqua computer pumps. These are the uh, pumps that I pulled out of my previous build. I will be using them in this build. Perfectly good pumps. They work well. Uh, three of them will pro provide plenty of pressure and flow. Um, this build is not going to have many as many uh, components as the previous. So I'm going to be short a couple radiators, uh, maybe short a few more uh, 90 degree bends and things like that nature but these are the aqua computer um, usb variant of d5 pumps they are usb control they have uh, a alarm here the aqua buses which communicates with the, the aquero xt uh, as well as a usb functionality so that allows you to plug it into the software the aqua c software and control them and they all work in unison there's temp sensor um, here input here as well they can be placed anywhere um, depending on what type of sensor you wanted to read. So um, I'm going to be putting them on. Where is that third one here? I'm going to be mounting them upright. They will not be in the traditional uh, like this one. Is. This is a standard housing, the traditional D5 uh, housing. But I'm going to be mounting them upright um, in this sort of nature. Let me just grab this one. So with the 400 millimeter radiators and possibly this one um the the run will run straight out of the outlet um, of the the pump into the reservoir or vice versa this one this is the outlet this way so the in, the inlet will be this way depending on the um depending on the direction of the loop it may feed the pump or it may outlet to the pump i don't know for sure i'm thinking i may do the center one feeding into the inlet and with the other ones um may do them in may do them outlet into the reservoir but i'm not sure yet i haven't really got that far we'll cross that bridge when we get there these pump stands or bits power uh, d5 bracket stands they're just uh, unscrewed to typical housing the standard d5 housing 
uh, both these up here. Um, so that's that. I'm going to be using, see what else we got over here. Put this back. Like I said, I'm going to be using red coolant. Um, I'm going back to red. The previous build, the most recent was black. Um, black coolant, I had black coolant in it. Um, you guys that are in my, com uh, my, my computer group, Computer Enthusiast Master Race, PC Gaming Performance, um, PC group on Facebook, you may have seen the black coolant, the most previous one. I, I don't believe, I don't have a finished video of the Red Rum 3 on my YouTube channel, but um, you know, I do have lots of pictures and videos and computer enthusiasts master race. So you guys can go ahead and go over there and join on Facebook. But this is Aurora, Aurora Red. I believe this is the Aurora Red 2. Now this is the shimmery, um, the shimmery coolant uh, from Mayhem. Uh, I use a Mayhem Blitz cleaning kit. Um, this, this is some, most of these components have already been cleaned out. There's a bunch of residue in the reservoir that was left behind from the, from that, that, uh, cleaning solution. But this is the Aurora Shimmery. You guys may have seen it. They're tiny, tiny, tiny particles of, um, reflective material. I don't know what it is. I would say metal, but I don't want to say metal because I doubt it. I, mean, I don't know what it is, but. It, it pretty much what it does is there's the tiny particles they kind of float around and shimmer around and they reflect light so it kind of gives this nice little dancing uh dancing particle type deal light going on in the reservoirs it looks pretty good we'll see how it works i've read uh, some research rather um a bunch of articles that have suggested it doesn't work well with complex loops i would not be able to use an inline filter like this aqua computer here that i uh, had previously this is a beautiful piece i won't be able to use it um filters are not really a, a, a big thing in pc water cooling you know i don't see many people using filters i would say the larger loops will, will, will be more susceptible to um flux and things that may you know the more components etc more radiators more water blocks the really complex really big loops will probably be the ones that will need to use uh, filters like these. It's an aqua computer filter. They, they, I don't think the smaller loops uh, need them, you know, typical CPU, GPU. Uh, those are the ones that, you know, the most popular, you know, the, the, the really small systems. They don't need uh, inline filters like this, but I won't be able to use this one because it will, in fact, if you can kind of see that there's some residue in there from the previous, this wasn't clean very well. I need to clean it out, but I won't be using it. This little screen in here will capture uh, the mayhems, the shimmery material that's in, that, that creates that dancing light effect in that coolant. So I won't be able to use that. But the complex loops, they are large and more susceptible to capturing the, or rather pooling uh, the, the reflective material in those in the, in the bend area. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, it may not last long. I may ultimately have to get some more, but it's, you know, not that big of a deal. Um, here's a fitting. So, see, so you got a flow indicator. Got so, I'm going to go ahead and go back to monoblock. This is an EK. Full cover monoblock for the Rampage 5 Edition 10 that's going to be in this loop. Well, that's going to be power in this loop. Let me see if I can get it open. But um, I'm going to hit. I, I didn't want to go back to monoblocks. I think I'm in the interest of not having anything else better to do. It'll look. It'll look. It'll, it'll be a substantial. Ah, substantial. It'll be a nice touch um, on the system. Let's put this over there. We'll get to that later. Across that bridge when we get there. Um. Typical, typical motherboard monoblock. I've had one on my Rampage 5 Extreme. Um, the Rampage 5 Edition 10 is like, you know, the same thing, really. You know, there, there's not much of a difference. Um, but this is it. It is an, a, the nickel, nickel plexi because I would like to be able to see the, uh, what did it say? RG Edition. Oh, I thought it said RGB. This is a typical 
uh, nickel block, mono block, same differences. You know, it'll it'll provide a more aesthetic, a pleasingly a aesthetically pleasing look, having that coolant going through there, flowing through there. Um, so I'm gonna be using that. Use one before, use one, use them all, all the same. Let's put that back. Uh, now the GPU blocks will be the same. The EK brand. I like to use. I use Bit Power actually. The 1080 build, the build with the four GTX 1080s, they were actually bitch power blocks. First time I used bitch power blocks. Um, I've always been an EK guy, EK, you know, FTW. Shouts out to EK. If you guys ever want to send me some free stuff. But I've, I used the bitch power GPU blocks um, in my previous build. These are bitch power RGB. They have an RGB strip there quite stained and dirty need to be clean but these are the old ones there were four of them um bitch power but i won't be used i won't be going back to bitch power uh this on this one i'm going to be using the let me put this down i'm going to be using ek going back to ek uh, and their gpu blocks these are the for the win three because there will be for the win, uh, EVGA for the win three GPUs running in this rig. There's going to be ultimately four of them um, because that's how I roll. You know what I'm saying? But for now, there is two since I only have a 5820K, which is, you know, just kind of like a throw that in there to let's just get it running type deal. 5960X that was in the previous is long gone. I may get a 6950X, but the purpose of me um, only using that chip is so that I can just, so I may wait maybe for a 7900X. If I can get this open. 7900X, I, I want this 7940. I believe the 14 quarter is supposed to be coming out in some January, I believe it's rumored to be. I don't know for sure. But, um,. Let's take a look. I haven't seen this. I haven't looked at them. I don't know what it looks like. It might be quite large. This box is larger than larger than usual, what I'm used to um, as far as EK stuff. EK's GPUs. You got your typical thermal pads. Extra parts, accessories, instructions. Looks like maybe back plate screws. I could put that there. I'll get to it later. Let's see what we got in here. Now, with the 1080 Ti, these are 1080 Ti's now. EK has went with this. Let me get this open. EK has went with this acetyl front plate that list that that. Okay, it's be difficult. That um, that's an indicator of the GPU that's you know I'll, that's running. Let's put this there. Um, nice big, really big piece of um, nickel on there. It's really flat. It seems like they've kind of, they went with them. Uh, I'm not used to the nickel actually being this thin. I'm used to a thicker nickel, even with the EK uh, stuff. I wonder why is it, it's a little thinner. Well, it seems at least the, um, the VRM ridge Seems a bit sh seems a bit shallow, but I don't know. Maybe that's due to the PCB design of the for the win three. Um, but yeah, I was saying about this here. This little plate is what EK is adding to. I wonder if there's a piece of acrylic on here. Is what EK is adding, not acrylic, to the um, to their 1080 Ti series. Starting with the 1080 Ti. 
I'm not much, I'm not sure if there's one on the TXP, the Titan X Pax, ah, Titan X Pascal, which is what, which is NVIDIA's uh, second TXP, was rendered to TXP. I don't know if this is RGB. I doubt it. It has any port for lighting. It just seems to be a black with a, with an etched, kind of laser etched GeForce GTX 1080 Ti. This comes off. It looks like it comes off. I would assume it has to come off in order to use a terminal, which I will not be using now that I realize, because I want to be able to keep that. I'll usually run terminals. I'm not going to run them this time because I want to have that silver, that silver bright, that chrome plated brass running in between them, kind of linking them together. But this, I mean, the block looks the block looks nice. It's not that heavy. It's a little lighter than I expected, honestly. That uh, 1080 block from Beach Power, and I believe the 980 Ti variants will maybe be a little bit heavier than that, but I doubt it has any effect on its cooling properties. I'm sure it will cool just as well with nothing to worry about. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. Um, let's see, we got left. Let's put this back in the box we got some let's put that there and this looks nice goes there thermal pads what's it seen one seen them all there's the instructions for the mono block and some stuff for the mono block blah 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 all right so here we got the ek ram these are the ram water blocks um these are the times four Four and four is eight. There's four. Uh, there's eight dims on the X99 motherboard, like the Rampage Five. So I'm going to go back to these. I'm kind of retracing my steps, if you will, for lack of better words. I don't want to say going backward. How does this come off? But um, I'm kind. I last my my last build. I didn't use them because I did not want them sacrifice the aesthetics of the dominator platinum special edition uh blackout that you guys probably seen a video on my channel but if you haven't go check that out um dominator, the dominator platinum special edition uh, only 500 made there was two actually two variants of special edition ram that corsair came out with with the dominator the dominator series i'm ruining this seal not sure why it's so strong but i just messed it up put that back some other time just a box who cares but this is the uh the ram blocks probably if you guys i'm sure you guys have seen them um there they are there's four of them and the way the system works is there's a block which is the top and there are sleeves that connect to the tops via these uh, screw ports here. There's ports, uh, ports, channels, I guess you want to call it. In and out, water comes through here, mate, mates with this plate. The water runs over this cold plate here, and the way it works is the sleeves. Here is an actual Dominator Platinum Special Edition DIM that I already taken apart. Now, one thing to be noted is the Dominator Platinum PCB, the DIM PCB is very tall. It is not your standard uh, PCB that these memory chips are on, the uh, memory ICs. If you'll notice, there is a teeny bit, I would say maybe 15% of the IC is still exposed. The memory chip IC is still exposed. That is a, one thing to be noted. It's not going to make much of a difference. It's not going to make a difference worth mentioning. You know, with that, I'm, I'm sure to be. I'm sure. I'm quite sure to be fine. Um, this, these, you have to. You guys understand that these, these are sandwiched in between two aluminum parts. You know, when they're running 3,000, 3,200, whatever, 4,000, some people 
you know, if you've got like Hall of Fame series stuff, they're still sandwiched in between the little heat spread. I mean, it'll it'll still just. I mean, it, granted, they are covered completely, but I doubt this small little section of ICs will determine the memory clock. And even still, it's gonna run. You know, it's not gonna run that high. But anyways, that's to be noted. So pretty much how it works is, you got these two Dominator sleeves here, the Monarch adapters. The Monarch adapters, in turn bolt up in this fashion there's a screw hole there and there's a screw hole there and you end up with a something like that sitting on top done it before i'm going to do it again these are uh, nickel all nickel a bunch of nickel nickel chrome so that's that you guys will see me i'll just i'll try to do as many how-to videos of um as far as taking those dominator Platinum heat. It's not that hard. Used, they used to be kind of hard to take off of. I've had some before. The older series needs another special edition series. Um, where you actually had to use like a, a heat gun to take it off to the stock heat sink. But I mean, it was it was actually not that hard. You know, I pretty much took like a small pry tool, typical pry, uh, typical pry tool. As long as you don't use like a like a screwdriver or nothing, you should be fine. Um, it's not gonna harm anything, um, but yeah, I'll try to make as many how-to videos as I can, showing how that works, and uh, you guys can have an idea of how to disassemble these things. Um, these are the sleeves here. Uh, there's just the pack. That's just the way that they're packaged. Um, but that's that, and uh, I'm gonna be using chrome fittings. I have quite a bit of fittings in my collection. Um, that I've that I've accumulated getting a little unorganized let's put this here make us a little bed for this radiator but um there's another one but I've I've got a quite a fit be quite a bit of fittings in my collection I won't be using these water blocks these are some water blocks um, this is an EK a seal water block this is what I use on my test bench actually um these are you know these these are compression fittings for soft tubing uh, so that's what they'll be used on this excess pc water block will be the water block was the water block actually i'm sorry the water block that i use in the most recent uh, version of the red rum won't be using it as mono block so fan controllers not really much not much to work these are usb splitters from nzxt these come in handy. When you're running a bunch of pumps, USB pumps, you don't have that many headers. These things are like heaven sent. $55, $60, forget what I paid for them. Not that much. Um, of course, we got fans back here. Plenty of fans. I don't, I don't know how many fans it is. One, two, three. That's like 17 fans or something. These 120, meter, 120 millimeter thermotake rings. They had a red color. They'll be going on the 480 millimeter radiator, as well as the 140 millimeter. These are going to be going on the 560 millimeter radiator. Um, nothing really fancy about fans, but I got plenty of fittings. I got even more fittings in soft tube fittings. Got plenty of compressions, compression fittings for um, hoses. Where are they? Somewhere in here. Maybe these. These are 16 millimeter OD. These are extenders. Plenty of extenders going on here. I gotta get them cleaned up actually. I got a bunch of valves. I will be using lots of valves uh, for an aesthetic reasons as well as a functional uh, drain. Functional drains. I like to have drains at the lowest points and some the high points if I need to fill it or tilt the case for any abnormal reason i got plenty of those um so those will be uh made it with some double 90s double 45s actually i use them for these i got some more here um ek and these are alpha cool xspc i'm sorry i like the way these look they're nice they got a nice color to them they're large. I like how large they are. Whoa. But 
I also like this stream, streamlined, refined kind of look to the EK. This is an EK brand and this is a XSPC brand. I only use those two brands of fittings. Bits Power have the best aesthetically pleasing um, valves in my opinion. These are EK 16, 16 auto, auto diameter um, compression fittings where they will i was going to show an example of that put these in there show an example of it on one of these tubing runs but i guess i misplaced it put it under there i don't want to dig it out i got some more here i need to put these in get these all i shouldn't have any problems when it comes to fittings got plenty of fittings I think they're going to look really good. I really like these uh, double 45s because they are revolvable. You'll see, oh, you'll see here. I can kind of, if I wanted to run something like that, if I want to turn it, if I want to put a couple of them together and, you know, make a snake or something, I can do that as well. Put it on the extender and I can make, you know, I really, I really like these. These are like my favorite ones, you know to use as far as when you trying to make complicated bins you know my first water cooling bill was was with uh only only petg i didn't use any uh, the only fittings i used were the connectors to the let's say for example the radiator or the reservoir i didn't use any 90 degree fittings for turns or anything like that it wasn't until my second uh water cooling bill red rum three all right three, three or two i don't know which one it was this is the fourth version there was a 3.5 kind of version which was a like coolant chain color chain it was kind of the same component well not really because well i guess you would say because the um the water cooling components stayed the same from the two from red rum two but the actual components are what changed but that's either that's neither here nor there there's going to be plenty of flow indicators uh, these are a wonderful aesthetic they add a nice touch to the radiator uh, the radiator to the water cooling build i got three of them here there's a fourth for what reason i don't know i you know i get i'm, I'm i get visions when i'm on um <laughs> when i'm shopping for these parts and I, I, I'll cross that bridge when I get there. I'll figure out whatever reason. It'll come to me. It'll come to me. Bunch of um, straight, these are typical 90s. I won't say typical. Revolvable 90s. EK. I got some bitch power ones in there. They need to be clean. I'm going to soak them in probably. Some, um, this is a bitch power. I'm soak them in some distilled water or something like that. Let's take this one out. But that's pretty much it for now, guys. Um, I may need to get some, I may need to get a few more of these. But the bits the bits power variant. These um double female elbows. Those could come in handy. I'm gonna need a lot of these. Or I may just use the fittings for turns. I don't know. We'll see. Compression fitting, 16 millimeter auto diameter. These are hose, some stuff, some compression fittings for soft tube. Won't be using any soft tube in this build as there won't be any, um, put that there. As there won't be any, what is that? There won't be any transition from hard line to soft tube in this one. I did it in the Case Labs STH-10 because the basement was not, a part of the case that will be seen so the soft tube was done in the basement where the pumps were um housed but these pumps will actually be um out in the open um i may get some mod tops for these they'll look it'll look better i may get some of those um some red ones or some chrome ones i don't know black sparkle maybe bitch power makes some awesome awesome uh, mod tops uh, so we may, may check that out um, but that's all I have right now for you guys. Uh, update on what we're going to be doing, the supplies that we got. We got plenty of water cooling supplies. Ah, supplies. So this build is going to be epic. Like always, the red rooms are always epic because I'm epic. I build epic stuff. And that's what I do. 
Make sure you guys join Computer Enthusiast Master Race on Facebook. Go over www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash CE Master Race. Join. We're doing some awesome stuff over there. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram at Elvis Tech Group. Um, check out my Facebook page, uh, www.facebook.com forward slash Albus Tech Group. That's all I have for now, and I'll see you guys in the next video.